Friends, today we begin another series on the Year of Faith. If we remember, in October last year, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI called for a synod of bishops. It dealt with the interesting topic of the new evangelization for the transmission of the Christian faith. The bishops engaged in a common discernment and study and came up with a set of propositions that the Pope may consider in writing his post-synodal apostolic exhortation on the new evangelization. In today's presentation, let us take a look at the nature of the new evangelization. The Synod states that the origin and source of the Church and her evangelizing mission is the Most Holy Trinity. That's why it is proper to look at evangelization as an activity of word and sacrament that welcomes us into the very life of God. With it and through the grace of the Spirit, we are empowered to evangelize and to give witness to the Word of God with enthusiasm and courage. New evangelization emphasizes the importance and primacy of God's grace and how we enter into His life in baptism. The Synod states that the new evangelization is a time of awakening, of new encouragement, and new witness that Jesus Christ is the center of our faith and daily life. Hence, we are called to a renewal of faith and efforts to share it with others, recognizing and considering the present-day situations, reaching out to those who are far from the faith, and inviting them back, and most especially, giving active attention to what we call inculturation of the faith, o ang paghahatid ng mabuting balita sa iba't ibang lahi at kultura. According to Scripture, God wills everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. With this in mind, the church has to be missionary. And being faithful to the dictum of Jesus to preach the gospel to every creature, she proclaims it to all with care and attention. And because new evangelization is seen as a permanent missionary dimension of the church, all the particular churches are encouraged to evangelize. It has three aspects. First, evangelization ad gentes to the nations is bringing the good news to those who do not know Jesus. Second, it includes the continuing growth in faith in the church's life. And thirdly, it is also directed specially to those who have become distant from the church. Each particular church is encouraged to value and integrate all their various agents and capabilities and to exercise the freedom to evangelize according to her own traits and traditions, provided that it is in unity with the proper bishop's conference or the synod of the Eastern Catholic Church. Now, we are all aware that we are living in a secularized world. But let us be reminded that it is and will always be the same world that God created. The Synod teaches that in and through Jesus Christ, we receive God's salvation and are able to discern the progress of His creation. Hence, in our contemporary world, we are called to bear witness to the gospel message of salvation and we are called to be salt and light of this world. The Synod Fathers also propose a pastoral document that may be called a Pastoral Plan of Initial Proclamation. Ito po ay isang dokumento na naglalaman ng mga hakbang upang mas maging mabunga ang paglalakbay natin sa pananampalataya. You know, my dear friends, as Christians, it is our obligation to proclaim the good news of Jesus. On the one hand, it is also an absolute right of each person, regardless of one's religion or lack of religion, to be able to know Jesus and His gospel. 
But we have to be careful. The proclamation must be given with integrity and must be offered with a total respect for each person without any form of proselytizing or pamimilit. We are also reminded that God has communicated Himself to us in His Word made flesh. The sinner then wishes that the Divine Word be ever more fully at the heart of every ecclesial activity. Alimbawa po, sa ating mga humiliya, mga katikismo, leksyo divina, at iba pang pamamaraan kung saan na ibabahagi natin ang pananampalataya. The Synod Fathers also urge us to study and understand the teachings of Vatican II. For the Council directs the renewal of the Church as she preserves her identity and mission in these modern times. Brothers and sisters, I hope we have given you ample information on the nature of the new evangelization. May we always be agents of the good news of Jesus. In this day and age, social networking has become a very convenient mode of communication among people. With just a click and the power of the internet, you are able to reach your loved ones wherever they are. On the other hand, it is saddening and alarming to know that there are some people who take advantage of the reach and availability of social networking sites spreading scandals and false information about a certain entity or personality, engaging in fraud and scams, and at times pretending to be someone else. Recently, I have been getting reports that there are fan pages and personal accounts under my name and are circulating over Facebook. To set the record straight, I have no personal Facebook account. Rather, I have only one Facebook page, and it is being maintained by Jesuit Communications. I seek your help in reporting fraudulent pages and accounts, not only those concerned with myself, but also with other people and entities. Let us keep the social networking world a good communication venue by being truthful.